So there was something new I wanted to try, and I'm going to use my Seastar S50 to do this. And some I had a friend send me the link to this transit finder. And what I want to do is try and record a transit of the International Space Station um, across the moon. And so um, I go to this website, transit-finder.com, and then you come to this page and you can set your location here. And all I did is click auto detect so that it would detect um, based on where my computer is, um, the where the International Space Station will transit the moon for m my location. And then I set a time span and then I put a preferred travel distance that I would be willing to travel to capture the transit in case it was outside of my range, then I could drive there to see it. And then I click calculate. And once I hit calculate, um, let's see, it calculates that out and it brings you up this list. And it found three solar transits and three lunar transits. And um, the ones that are listed there in black, those are close passes. And so that's not going straight across the moon, but there was one that was red, and that means it's going to actually transit the moon or the sun, whichever one it comes up with. And so this one is telling me right here in red that the ISIS or the International Space Station will transit the moon in my area on November 4th of 2025. And then it tells me the time of 2156. So that's right before 10 p.m. my time. And it's a moon transit. It tells me right here it's the International Space Station, angular size and distance and all that. But what I want to really pay attention to is here, the transit duration right here is 0.65 of a second. And so what I know from that is I do not have any wiggle room to get this wrong. And so um, I want to plan ahead and make sure that I don't miss it. You know, you don't want to be putting your C-star out two minutes before this happens and think you're not going to miss it because you may. It, you could click on the more information and then it will give you some of the declination and all of the inf that information. Uh, we necessarily don't need all of that information because the sea star is going to track the moon for us. And then all we need to do is record as it flies by. But we know that it, a 0.65 of a second is very quick. And so you blink and you could miss this. Um, you can show it on the map. Um, I'm not going to do that because I have changed the location here just for my security. I, you know, I don't, I don't know that anybody wants to come to my home or anything, but I, I changed those numbers just so that and a little added security for us. So I'm not going to show it on the map, but you could do that and it will show you um, where you are in relationship to seeing the transit most ideally. If you go down through this list, um, you can see that it, I did um, change the time um, that I put on this and scheduled it through the first part of December. And you see that in that course of a month, there's only one that actually transits the moon. The rest of them are close passes they're close passes to the sun or they're close passes to the moon. But the only one that transits is the one on November 4th. Um, we could go in and change that date to longer. But just for your information, when I did that, it will only let you go out, I think, two months out. And there were no other transits. And so be this is my only chance to catch the transit before the end of the year. Um, it does tell us down here that the long-term predictions um, are approximate, and so you want to check back 
as it nears the time of the transit to make sure that none of the times have changed because you don't want to wait till the last second and then log on here and find out that oh the time changed and it was an hour earlier and now you've missed it so you'll want to keep track of that um the prediction times are adjusted to the device's time zone so it's adjusted to my computer time zone and so this is the transit that we're going to try and image and so i do have to have a plan because i do not have even one second of error room and so what i am going to do is i am going to set my c star out and i'm going to set it out early um because as i was looking at the night sky tonight it's pretty cloudy in my sky and i am really worried that i won't even be able to catch it at all because of the clouds and that'll be sad because it'll be months before i get another chance um you only get one shot at this and so you want to be prepared so i did put the c star out on i have it on equatorial mode it wouldn't necessarily matter if it's in azimuth or equatorial you just need to be able to find the moon and have it centered. So I did that a couple hours ahead of time and just had it tracking the moon for a couple hours just because I was worried about it being able to find it when I needed to with the clouds. And I needed one second for it to shine through and and I was pretty lucky. And so I'm um, kind of giving you a spoiler here that I was able to capture it. Uh, but this is how I did it. So what I did is I set out my C star and I do have it in equatorial mode. I did the polar aligning and I am focusing in on M31 because I have found that sometimes the C star struggles trying to find the moon. And so, but if I have it find another object first and then go to the moon, I'll just stop this. I'll let it do all its initialization and its auto-focusing. And then when I come out and go to the moon, it seems to find it a little easier. And, and I guess that's just because it has located an object so it knows exactly what it's pointing at in the sky. And see, there it is right there in the middle. It finds it almost, I think, every single time when I do it that way. And so um, if you're struggling trying to find the moon, just go to another deep sky object and let it do its initialization, its autofocus, and then start its imaging. And then once it starts that, you can click stop and then go back out and locate the moon. And once you locate the moon, hit the little tracker icon up in the top right hand corner and that will keep the moon in the center. Now you can see that there are some clouds going by and that's what I was experiencing earlier this evening. And so I was really nervous I wouldn't be able to get it. But it cleared up just enough that I was able to capture it and it was kind of a fun little project to do. And so I just left it at normal size. If I enlarged it too big, I was afraid I wouldn't see it because it would go across that little section of the moon that I had enlarged so quickly that you blink at the wrong moment and you would miss it. And so I just left it at one times. I did do some auto-focusing on it just so that it was ready to go. And then I slid this little slider over to video and I click, clicked on the raw image. And then I waited till about four minutes before the time it was supposed to go across the screen and do the transit of the moon. And that's when I hit the little button and started recording. And then I watched it, Eagle Eye watched it. And as soon as I saw that ISIS go across the moon, I knew I'd captured it. I did wait about 30 seconds or so after it passed just to make sure that it wouldn't cut off the video. And then I click stop. And then the video was in my um, my folder, my album. Went to my album and clicked on the C star. And there's the lunar videos right there at the top. 
I did a practice run before I did the actual one. And then this is the actual one. And it's a recording for several minutes as I captured that. But what I'm going to attach here on this video is I have cropped it out so that you don't have to watch minutes of just staring at the sun or the moon waiting for that to happen. So I have cropped it down and shrunk it the video. I also slowed down the video so that you would be able to see it more because as as I watch it, it goes past really fast. And like I say, if you blink at the right wrong second, you would miss it. And so I did slow it down just so that you'd be able to see it. I did I will post a couple of renditions of the video. I will do another a section of the same transit, but I'll enlarge it a little so it's a little bigger on the screen. And then I'll try and get a still photo of it. Um, it's a little trickier getting the still photo of it because the it's not like you can access the subs easily in the C-Star app because all that's in here is the lunar video. You know, you don't get the subs folder with it. But um, these are stacked. You could stack this video. I guess maybe I could try doing that and, and see how it stacks with that going across it. It's at the very end of the video, really, and see how that works. If If I decide to do that I'll include that at the end of this video as well just so we can see what it looks like on the moon um, not sure if it will work or if you'll even be able to see it but I will put a couple of renditions of the it's all the same video but I'll enlarge it so you can see it but that's how I set it all up and I just did a recording of the moon and don't do a time lapse or anything or you will most likely miss it so just a regular video and save it in the raw format. And this is what I captured. This was a fun adventure, so give it a go. Clear skies, everybody. Thanks for watching.